welcome to Creative Crochet with Rhonda. Today's going to be a little bit different. I'm not providing a tutorial. I'm not showing you yarn. Um, I've been working hard at, at putting out tutorials for beginners and a tutorial for my ripple stitch hat. Uh, I hope you tried it or are going to try it. Uh, somebody did try it already and I saw her hat and it's amazing. If you're watching this I know you know who you are and thank you for trying it and and posting a picture on your Instagram it's just beautiful and it makes me happy to know that that I'm putting out a pattern that's useful for people and they like it anyways today is different I'm gonna be me raw and real and just talk a bit about myself Hopefully you're interested in hearing and showing you a bit of different things that I've made and some things about myself. But first, really important, I want to say thank you. Thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to Franny from Franny Square for sending me subscribers. It means so much to me. Not only did Franny send me subscribers, but she's become a friend and she's become a mentor and always there to listen to me, to read my long drawn out emails, because <laughs> I know I can be wordy. You might find that out. Please shut me up if I need to. And um, yeah, I, so it's been really helpful to me. I really appreciate all the time you take to watch my videos. Unfortunately, I did lose a subscriber, so that was a little bit disheartening. I try my best to put out material for everybody from every skill level, and I'm sure that people who are on Franny's channel, um, they're probably not beginners, so maybe my beginning tutorials are just not suitable for you. But I'm going to try to put all kinds of material that's going to cater to uh, all kinds of skill levels. What I'd like from you is if you're thinking this isn't the channel for you, before you decide, I hope you will send me a message and let me know the types of things you want me to provide because really it's not about me, it's all about you and giving you what you want. So. So please don't unsubscribe until you let me know what it is you want and see if I can provide that for you. So that's that. A little bit about me. I think we all have our interesting stories on how we started to crochet. I didn't have a grandparent teach me. By the time I was six, my grandparents had passed. Um, my mother was not into crocheting. I know that my grandfather was a little bit creative because I still have a memory as a very young girl. He had given me this dog he made, a stuffed blue dog. Very simple, but from the heart. And I guess my mother thought that I was too old at some point and got rid of it. That's sad because honestly, I think that if it didn't fall apart, I'd still have it today because of the memory. And if I took after anybody with my creativity, I guess it would have been my grandfather because there was nobody else. So I didn't get into it through somebody teaching me, like a family member teaching me. I actually got into it not that long ago. It was less than three years ago and the reason is kind of interesting. I acquired in an interesting way, I won't go into how, but I acquired almost, no, probably more than 800 brand new vintage craft books all from the 90s and I had all of them in storage and I pulled them out of storage and I have an Etsy shop where some of them are are on there so if you're into various crafts please check it out craft corner plus I'll leave the link below in my description box favorite my shop if if you like to take a look at what's there if you're into any crafts crochet and other crafts just let me know if there's something specific you're looking for and I'll see what I've got but I had all these books and I have some other creative interests which I'll which I'll share with you but 
nothing that was like a craft like that. Like I've got books for quilting and cross stitch and decorative painting and woodworking and sewing and crochet, of course, and knitting and you name it. There's a plastic canvas. That's another one that I thought was a little bit popular. And so I saw all these beautiful books and I thought, you know, since I have these books, maybe I should try something. And I don't know what made me pick crochet, but off to Walmart I went and I bought one hook. I think it was a five or a 5.5 and one skein of yarn. That's it. So I brought it home and I started crocheting and I had a book with different crochet, crochet stitches in it. And I tried to incorporate those stitches in my project. And one of the first ones I made was this very lopsided scarf. And I, I did put that, I posted that on one of my videos, not posted it. I, I just showed it. I actually have it here because you can see it better if it's a video. Look at this. It's almost embarrassing, but it's not really embarrassing because it was my first project. I didn't know what I was doing. Nobody taught me. So it goes from not bad. I mean, well, <laughs> and then it gets like, whoa, <laughs> really crazy. The colors are nice, but you know, it's kind of all over the place. Anyways, that was one of my first projects. And then I made a little rectangle and I folded it up and made a little pouch to put in some of my little notions. So that was cool. Anyways, that's how I got started because I had those books and then I ended up going on YouTube and following lessons and, and from there learning how to read patterns. But that's basically how I got started. So I have other interests as well and I'll just share a few of them with you. One of the other creative um, endeavors that I was into was photography. So I have a DSLR camera and some nice lenses and I really got into nature photography and, and close-up photography. So we were in Arizona and I, my other half and I, and we were in um, Painted Desert, Petrified Forest, and I took pictures there and they turned out like abstract paintings and I just worked with them and they're just beautiful. So I have, I, I mean, I do other photography as well, but I have a website for my photography as well. And I'll link that below if you're curious and you'd like to see. Um, I did sell some of them, but it's a hard sell. And maybe I'm not that great with marketing because I'd rather be creating than trying to sell which is a common problem for crafty people. So that's one thing. And the other thing that I like to do is sing. Uh, I think I always liked to sing when I was young. I would, if I were frustrated, I would go and put a record on and make it really loud and then sing my, my lungs off. And I figured nobody's gonna hear me anyways because the music's so loud, but I would never sing in public never sing for people. Um, I once heard my father tell my sister that Rhonda sings like a frog <laughs> and I think it affected me for my life. <laughs> so anyways, I always enjoyed singing but was afraid to sing and I was in choir in uh, junior high school. So that's just before high school for those of you who didn't have that middle school. Um, but that's because I didn't want to be in band. I wasn't interested in an instrument, so I was in choir. But I never really heard what I sounded like. And I guess I enjoyed it, but I never thought of myself as a singer. So anyways, one day I found this app on my phone. I was playing a game and then it was just advertised. It's called Smule, S-M-U-L-E. And it's a karaoke app. And secretly I hid in the basement and I started singing. That was six years ago. And I do believe I've improved since then because when I listen back, I can definitely hear a difference. So I think it's kind of like a muscle that develops. And I actually, pre-COVID, I got into open mic a little bit where I had 
live musicians playing behind me while I sang and that was really such a, an amazing feeling. And also while I was on Smule singing, I, I ended up making a friend who had a puppet on one of the songs and a few of the songs and ended up sending me a puppet as a gift. And for some reason, I think I thought about this as a child. I thought about how cool it was to throw your voice. I didn't really understand it. So I looked up how to be a ventriloquist and I made my puppet talk. I gave my puppet a personality. I gave her a voice and I've actually brought her with me so you can meet her. And I, I don't know, like, I mean, I've, I've, I've brought her, I've, I've done live performances with her and I would say the majority of people really loved it and were amazed. And I've, I've done it online as well with Smule and people were amazed. I've got a, a YouTube page called Rhonda and Company where I have her and I featured in there and I've got another puppet, a monster puppet named Blue. So um, if you go to that YouTube page, I'll link it below, you'll see that and other things I do on Smule. Um, but anyways, I've done it live and most, like I said, most people love it, but there are some who think it's weird. And I think about years ago, this woman, Sherry and her puppet Lamb Chop, and it wasn't weird back then. And then of course there's been some ventriloquists that became famous from America's Got Talent. I think it's in a lot of ways, a forgotten or unappreciated, unappreciated talent. And I picked it up and it's been fun. So promise not to judge me because I'll bring her on and we can have a conversation, but it's been a while. So try not to look at my mouth too much. Now you're going to for sure. But anyways, um, I'll bring her so you can meet her. Penny, are you ready? Uh-huh. Okay. Here we go. Gotta put my hand up her butt. She doesn't like that too much. Okay, so this is Penny. Penny, you want to say hello? Okay. Hello. Do you have to stick my, your hand up my butt? You're a puppet and that's how we do it. It goes right up to your mouth and you know. Oh, yuck. <laughs> we are just being silly. So, are we gonna sing? No, because this is not the Smule app. No? What is it? This is my YouTube channel, remember? Creative Crochet with Rhonda. Oh, yeah. Kind of like Alcoholics Anonymous, where you talk about yarn addiction? No, <laughs> not at all. We love yarn, but we're not addicted to it. You can never have too much yarn. That sounds like an addiction. No, you have so much yarn. There are people with lots more yarn than me. No way. Yes way. Like a whole, you know, the people with a whole wall with shelves of yarn. Every different color, every type of yarn you can imagine. Wow. Are you guys like that too? Yeah, that sounds like an addiction to me. Well, it really isn't. It's, we just love to crochet and yarn is beautiful. Yeah, I suppose. But singing is better than talking about single crochet and double crochet and triple crochet and slip knots. Yuck. Boring. It's not boring. It's a lot of fun. Well, you do make nice things. Yeah. So I think I should sing for them. You think? Uh-huh. Just because they like yarn doesn't mean they don't like singing. Do you mind if Penny sings one song? You know what? I'll tell you what. I'll let you sing one song. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And then... Do you know what I'm going to do next? What? Remember those toys that I made that are in the basement? Those two toys? 
Yeah, the ferns yet? And the round thing? Yeah, the ball. Yeah, I like those. Yeah. So I would like to show them what I've made. And then I'll show them where the pattern is and they can make it themselves. Yeah, that would be nice. So we'll sing a song and then, well, if you like her, she can come back and visit. Yeah, I can come back. Yeah, so what song do you want to sing for them? You are my sunshine. That's a good one. Okay. So she's going to sing one song and then we're going to move on. Okay, ready? Uh-huh. Okay. With no music, it's a cappella. A cappella? Uh-huh. Okay. Go ahead. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy. When skies are gray, you'll never know, Yarn, how much I love you. Please don't take my yarn away. I made it funny. <laughs> you did. I like yarn, too. Really? Yeah. I like, I like yarn. I like the colored yarn. All the, all the nice colors mixed together. Oh, like the variegated and the self-striping yarn. Yeah. Yeah, that. Can you make me a sweater with that? Well, I think, yeah, maybe I'll make you a sweater. I know I haven't yet, but look at the outfit she's wearing. Isn't that nice? Turn around and show them your outfit. <laughs> okay, you can turn back around. <laughs> well, we'll talk more about yarn. Yeah. I think you should maybe, maybe get some more. Well, not yet. Yeah. To all you yarn addicts out there, have fun. <laughs> They're not yarn addicts. We just love yarn. Yeah. Well, if you think you can never have too much yarn, I don't know. Well, I beg to differ. Okay, just make me a sweater. Don't you think she should make me a sweater? <laughs> okay, I will try to remember to do that. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed Penny. I hope so. And now we're going to get to the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about. So, see you later. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Nice to meet you. Yarny friends. <laughs> <laughs>